morning. Oh, you can do better than that since we actually have people today. Good morning. Good morning. Wonderful. So everything today other than the hymns are in the bulletin. If you are wanting to sing the German of a mighty fortress, there should be more uh, large, uh, like half sheet of those because the first verse uh, is missing the first line. So we uh, printed those so you can use that if you would like. The Lord's Prayer, when we get to that, Lisa is going to, she's offered to come up and read it in German. So anybody that knows the German can read along with Lisa, and then we will do it in English. Okay? So let us stand for our confession and forgiveness as printed in the bulletin. Behold, Lord, an empty vessel that needs to be filled. I am weak in the faith, strengthen me. Warm me and make me fervent, that my love may go out to my neighbor. I do not have a strong and firm faith. At times I doubt and am unable to trust you altogether. Lord, help me. Strengthen my faith and trust in you. In you I have sealed the treasure of all I have. I am poor, you are rich, and came to be merciful to the poor. I am a sinner, you are upright. With me there is an abundance of sin, in you is the fullness of righteousness. Therefore I will remain with you of whom I can receive, but to whom I may not give. Amen.
grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and from which nothing can separate us, and the life-giving Holy Spirit be with you all. Let us pray. Almighty God, gracious Lord, we thank you that your Holy Spirit renews the church in every age. For out your Holy Spirit on your faithful people, keep them steadfast in your word. Protect and comfort them in times of trial. Defend them against all enemies of the gospel. And bestow on the church your saving peace through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you, and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. And you may be seated as Stan, the reader, comes forward for the blessing and our readings today. Let us pray. Gracious God, we do not live by bread alone, but every word that comes from you. Bless Stan, who will read to us the scriptures. Make us hunger for the word of life. Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. Good morning. Good morning. The first reading today is from Jeremiah chapter 31, verses 31 through 34. The days are surely coming, says the Lord, when I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel and the house of Judah. It will not be like the covenant that I made with their ancestors when I took them by the hand to bring them out of the land of Egypt, a covenant that they broke, though I was their husband, says the Lord. But this is the covenant that I will make with the house of Israel after those days, says the Lord. I will put my law within them. I will write it on their hearts and I will be their God, and they will be my people. No longer shall they teach one another, or say to one another, Know the Lord, for they shall all know me, from the least of them to the greatest, says the Lord, for I will forgive their iniquity, and remember their sin no more. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. The second reading is from Romans chapter 3, verses 19 through 28. Now we know that whatever the law says, it speaks to those who are under the law, so that every mouth may be silenced and the whole world may be held accountable to God. For no human being will be justified in his sight by the deeds prescribed by the law. For though the law comes, the knowledge of sin. But now, apart from law, the righteousness of God has been disclosed and is attested by the law and the prophets. The righteousness of God through faith in Jesus Christ for all who believe. For there is no distinction, since we all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. They are now justified by his grace as a gift through the redemption that is in Jesus Christ, whom God put forward as a sacrifice of atonement by his blood effective through faith. He did this to show his righteousness because of his divine forbearance he had passed over the sins previously committed. It was to prove at the present time that he himself is righteous and that he justifies the one who has faith in Jesus. Then what becomes of boasting? It is excluded. By what law? By that of works? No, but by the law of faith. For we hold that a person is justified by faith apart from works prescribed by the law. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God.
Thank you, choir. We are going to stand now for our gospel acclamation as printed in the bulletin. Gospel is according to John, the eighth chapter. Glory to you, o Lord. Now Jesus said to the Jews who had believed in him, If you continue in my word, you are truly my disciples. You will know the truth, and the truth will set you free. And they said, We are children of Abraham. We have never been enslaved to anyone. What do you mean by saying you will be made free? Jesus said everyone who sins is a slave to that sin. The slave does not have a permanent place in the household, but the son has a place there forever. So if the son sets you free, you are free indeed. The gospel of our Lord. Praise you may be seated. So October 31st, most people know this day as Halloween, right? Trick-or-treaters and all that. But in the Lutheran Church, we know it as Reformation Day. It's the date when Martin Luther nailed those infamous 95 Theses on the door of the church in Wittenberg, Germany. Now, that happened on a Saturday because, of course, the next morning was Mass, and most people coming in would see that nailed on the door. Reformation itself is always celebrated the last Sunday of October, but very rarely does it fall on a Sunday as it does today. In fact, I was looking back at uh, the time I've been a pastor, it is, this is the fifth time in all the 35 years that it's fallen on a Sunday. So it's a great day to celebrate because not only is it Reformation Sunday, it's actually Reformation Day. When I look back at those years that I preached on this Sunday, one, one in particular comes to mind in 2004. In 2004, I was at my church in Hudson, Ohio, and it was actually the last time I preached on Reformation there. Following that, two months later, I left, and so that was my last Reformation Sunday there, and I began with this story, and it involves a parrot. Those of you who were here last week or watched the service, there was a parrot in last week's story. This wasn't intentional. I just happened to find this a sermon from then and looked at it and thought, well, okay. So a popular bar in a particular city moved to another location and a church in that city needed a place temporarily. They were renovating their building. And so they had put where the bar was like a pulpit. And then of course they brought in chairs folding chairs temporarily. Well, on that particular Sunday, the first time they gathered, they discovered that the previous owner, the bar, had left his parrot. So his parrot was up in a cage. And so Sunday morning comes and the pastor gets up and the parrot says, say, look here, we have a new bartender. And the choir enters and says, and a new floor show. <laughs> but then he looked out at the members seated and he says, well, but the same customers, the same old crowd. <laughs> Just like us, right? We're the same old crowd. We are those people. 
The story is really in reference to John 8. If the Son makes you free, you are free indeed. And of course, our reading from Romans, all have sinned and fall short of God's glory. Therefore, you are justified by grace as a gift through Christ. So in other words, we're all sinners. And Jesus is the one, as he tells the people in the gospel, the Son is the one that sets us free not anything we have done. So really today's readings are always the readings for Reformation Sunday, all three of the ones we heard. And really the focus is from Romans. That's the one we most often think of as Lutherans. For we hold a person is justified by faith apart from works prescribed by the law. This passage became the root of the spiritual revolution where Martin Luther sought peace with God and forgiveness, he thought God was wrathful, punishing, unloving. And this understanding of God's nature as seen in Jesus is what liberated Luther and freed also Paul who who wrote these words in Romans. This is where Paul, as he's writing these, is thinking about how Jesus has changed what he had known. They both rediscover a God who is a graceful God. So when Jesus says, if you continue in my word, you are truly my disciples, you will know the truth and it will set you free. Now we realize that truth of Jesus sets us free, but it's not free. The price is dear. The cost to us is our prejudices, illusions, secret sins, some of our traditions maybe, and view of history. And not only that, this truth Jesus is speaking of might lead us to unpopular actions and stands. Look what it cost Jesus. And in order for Luther to uncover this truth, he challenged some cherished traditions of his day. Now, when I preached on that Reformation Day in 2004, it was kind of an interesting time in our denomination, the ELCA. We were doing a study on sexuality, and specifically homosexuality. And we had just concluded it that day, and I asked the congregation, so how does this fit in with what we're talking about on Reformation. Well, I said Luther felt very strongly that the church is always in need of reform. And over the centuries, the church, the Christian church, and I mean the whole, has often been the most unjust and oppressive institution of all. Think of this. In past centuries, the Bible has been used by church people to uphold slavery and the oppression of women. First of all, slavery. There are New Testament passages which speak of slavery. Slaves, obey your earthly masters with fear and trembling and singleness of heart as you obey Christ. That's from Ephesians 6, 5. So this passage and others were used by people in this country to sanction slavery. In fact, the Presbyterian Church during the Civil War split over slavery. Do you know when they came back together, when they unified? In the 1980s. Took over 100 years for them to return as one body. How about women? (laughs) This is always interesting because in the Bible, in the New Testament, Paul's letters, We hear things like, this is from 1 Corinthians 14, women should be silent in the churches, for they are not permitted to speak, but should be subordinate as the law also says. All of you women love that, right? Follow it. Well, it was in 1970 that the predecessors to the ELCA began ordaining women. Some churches still do not allow women to be ordained. There was a lot of study of scriptures. Pastor Fried will tell you there was talk about, oh, the church is going to just fall apart and end with this. You told me that some years ago. 
it didn't. And now it's been 51 years since that happened. And, you know, it's interesting. Our presiding bishop is a woman. And almost half of the bishops in the ELCA now are women. It took 50 years to get to that point, but it happened. So in 2004, as we were studying this whole document, I then went into, you know, the passages in the Bible. I don't know how many of you have read. There's seven in the Bible that deal with homosexuality. And it's interesting because you really need to study them in the original languages and the context to understand what's really going on. And so I referred to those, and then I said, so what is the real message when we look at this whole idea? Well, I, I then quoted Galatians chapter 3, 28. There is no longer Jew or Greek, slave or free, male or female. All of you are one in Christ Jesus. And I actually, at that time, then repeated and inserted, just to give an idea of what is going on there, the words homosexual and heterosexual. In 2009, our denomination approved the ordination of LGBT, I'm not going to read all the letters off because there's lots of them that have been added, in ministry, in relationships. Now, of course, that caused division. Churches left our denomination, formed other denominations, you know, and over that. But... It's interesting, not just that, but other things that have split churches within denominations themselves. The United Methodist Church right now is struggling with this issue and is working on how to divide it up. Uh, and so is the Moravian Church. Now, I bring this up for this reason. There have been lots of things in Christianity that have divided churches and split churches. Let's go back not to just 1517, but let's go back to 1054. Does anybody know what happened in 1054? I heard somebody say, Eastern and Western, this great schism that happened then. And it had to do over the disagreement over who was really the head of the church. You know, was it the Pope or was it the Eastern Bishop, whatever and a lack of communication because of language and civil wars. So within this, there were many disagreements and they split. And it continues. Something I want to mention, because we hear about it in the news, we hear all these things. One of the disparities that is now a big part of Christianity that we hear about is those referred to as evangelical and those mainline Protestants were in the mainline Protestant church. To go into this, we have to understand what the word evangelical means. Does anybody know the definition of evangelical? The true definition in the Greek? Well, it derives from the Greek word euangelion, which means gospel. Good news. So technically speaking, the evangelical refers to a person, a church, organization that is committed to the Christian gospel message Jesus spoke as the savior of humanity. The Greek word is used in the New Testament and was popularized in the early centuries of the church, and it was to distinguish between the love-centric movement of Christians, of Jesus' followers, from the violent Roman Empire that often made it good news to celebrate military victories. So they were trying to keep that a separate thing, obviously. So in our name, Evangelical Lutheran Church in America, it's appropriate in that definition. And in fact, Martin Luther, Martin Luther, did not want us to be called Lutherans. Everybody know that? Did not want his name used as the name of the church. What he preferred was Christian or evangelical. Now, a better term for those in what is called evangelical is, and this is a long word, 
evangelicalism. <laughs> Look it up. And it's really talking about a worldwide interdenominational thing that includes many, many, many Christians. And in that category, it has the whole idea of conversion, born again, all of that that we hear. And it traces back to 1738, where various theological streams contributed to the foundation, including pietism, puritanism, and Quakerism, and preeminently John Wesley and other Methodists went this direction initially, the Great Awakening it was called. Now, you may be thinking, why is he talking about this today on Reformation Sunday? Why are we talking about all these different things that divide us? Well, because I want to make sure we understand that the Reformation in 1517, 1054, the schism, and all that we're hearing now, the different things that divide us, continues and that's not what Luther wanted or others that have experienced that. We are in a period now that has caused a lot of division or a lot of, a lot of concern. COVID certainly has shook the foundation of many things. Churches, especially if you look at statistics, church attendance has dropped even after coming back in person, below 50% for the first time in long, long time. Part of it is electronics, right? We all have our phones and so forth, and you see the camera here. We stream the service now. Lots of churches do that. We're doing, we did the YouTube, thank you, Norm, for what, a year and a half, and Bonnie and Kelly for doing that. So we're in a big change time, kind of a reformation of the church. What does that mean for us now and forward? We will, will we continue to be as we were, or will we truly be evangelical in the sense of spreading the good news of Jesus to everyone we know, and how we do it is key. Whatever that means is, if people understand that we are free because of Jesus, Jesus frees us, and grace, the grace of God, which is here for all of us and for all people, and it's our job to do that and to continue the work of the Church of Jesus Christ, not Lutheran or evangelical or Methodist or whatever, Roman Catholic, whatever you want to say, it's the work of Christianity, Jesus. Those are questions we must consider and think about as we move forward into the future, how we will be to bring others to know Jesus. Let us pray. Dear Lord, you have given us so much. And sometimes we don't understand what it means for the people of the world and ourselves. How do we reach people today in this year and beyond? How are we bringing the good news? May we be open to your spirit to guide us to do your work beyond our walls into the world. In Jesus' name, amen. Take some time for reflection, then we will sing hymn 590 in the red hymnal, and you notice it's one, four, five, and six.
called into unity with one another in the whole creation. Let us pray for our shared world. We pray for all who long for a word of truth and the radical grace that flows from the cross. Inspire congregations to freely and boldly proclaim your love for all people with persistence and hope. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. We pray for your creation, mountains, rivers, streams, cities, homesteads, neighborhoods. Write in our hearts a new love and care for creation. Give us the will to curb wasteful habits and hold accountable those who neglect the vulnerable. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. We pray for all who aspire to public office and all who will vote on Tuesday at local polling places. Pour wisdom and understanding upon all who govern, so that communities of justice and peace may thrive. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. We pray for all who long for healing in mind, body, or spirit, especially those we name before you now. Strengthen hospitals, clinics, counseling centers, nursing homes, and recovery centers to be holy spaces of renewal that all might live the abundant life you intend. Hear us, O oh God. And we give thanks for all the saints and reformers who have gone before us, who dwell in your holy habitation. Give us courage through their example to challenge unjust systems and work toward life-giving reformation. Hear us, O oh God. Receive these prayers, O God, and those too deep for words through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Blessed be Christ our peace who breaks down the walls and divide. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And also with you. And we are not sharing the peace except within our own families and uh, loved ones nearby. So you may do so. Um, at this time. <laughs> Maybe seated as our ushers come forward for the offering, and we will have a prayer. Let us pray. To God, you, we give you thanks for this day and for all days that you bless us with. Guide us now as we prepare to return a portion of the blessings you have already given us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.
before communion, if you have not received communion, the little, raise your hand up, ushers can give those to you if you haven't. We have some people, and there's more back in the refrigerator if we have, don't have enough, just so you know. Sorry about that. We had a little confusion over whether we were having altar communion. We are not. We are continuing to use uh, the ones that are being passed out. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We give us to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord, our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy, that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you. By the witness of your saints, you show us the hope of our calling and strengthen us to run the race set before us, that we may delight in your mercy and rejoice with them in glory. And so with Martin Luther and all the reformers, the choirs of angels, the hosts of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup and gave thanks, gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new promise in my blood shed for you and all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Lisa, if you would like to come <clears throat> Here, and she is going to say the Lord's Prayer in German, and you can join in, and then we will say it in English. And anybody who wants to join in the German, please go ahead. Vater unser, der du bist im Himmel, geheiligt werde dein Name, dein Reich komme, dein Wille geschehe wie im Himmel, also auch auf Erden. Unser täglich Brot gib uns heute und vergib uns unsere Schuld als wir vergeben unseren Schuldigen und führe uns nicht in Versuchung, sondern erlöse uns von dem Übel, denn dein ist das Reich und die Kraft und die Herrlichkeit in Ewigkeit. Amen. And then in English, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. And Jesus said, whoever comes to me will never be hungry, and whoever believes in me will never be thirsty. You may be seated, and again, you, you peel the top one of these off, that's the wafer, and then the bottom one is the one after the world, is the grape juice. <laughs>
Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Amen. Amen. There are some announcements in the bulletin, but I wanted to highlight the fact that we have our Bavarian brunch today. Following, you're welcome to join us in the fellowship hall after uh, the service. Well, I don't know. There is a microphone going around. Go for it. Um, uh, I guess we have to start in the fundraiser, and this is the kickoff of our new fundraiser for the church. And please, uh, if today we didn't sell tickets and, and whatever, so we just ask for the door offer. But we found out this roof and fellowship hall roof, they're leaking. Well, we managed to fix the, the, the roof in between, but those roofs are starting to leak now, so that's why we. Thank you, Petra. Yes, so any, there's a free will offering that will be a basket in the fellowship hall, and that is to go, Petra has asked that to go to the roof. Um, we weren't expecting this. Uh, at this. We knew it would come at some point, but just so you're aware, and I spoke to Pastor Freed, this roof is 36 years old, has never been replaced, but that's not even that much the fellowship hall has not been replaced it's 51 years old so we've been fortunate and all of our leaks have been in the middle where the offices are and that is finally well we think it's fixed it has not leaked since the roofing company came out so it should be fine but now we're looking at this so just think about that. Also today at the Bavarian Lunch, we're concluding our stewardship. Uh, if you haven't turned in cards that you received, please do so. Bless you, John. Next week, <laughs> well, he's right there, is our affirmation of uh, baptism for two of our uh, young people, Harrison and Shepard Kern. Shepard doesn't have an H in it, but, you know, autocorrect loves to do that. So... It is correct in the next Sunday's bulletin. The Mary Freed Memorial Concert is, con is beginning again this Thursday evening. The Salvation Army Band will be here. Uh, please join us. It's at 7. We need people to bring refreshments, especially um, beverages, correct, Ruth? Uh, and any other things. There is a sign-up sheet in the back on the bulletin board. Please join us for that. With that in mind as well, I sent a council um, email out, but any able-bodied people after the service, before you go down and eat, we need to move all this out of here for Thursday. So if you can help with that, stick around and we'll do it pretty quickly, okay? Anything else that we need to talk about that I saw another hand. Ruth, you've already had your chance. I'm kidding. We have lots of cookies for um, for Thursday concert. If you're bringing something, bring something different than cookies. And I would like to say, guys, welcome back from your yes. <laughs> so glad you're back to direct. And uh, you know, the bell choir has not played since when. 2020 in March. So you did great, and thank you. We're glad you're back to play. Also, I was asked about men's dinner is Tuesday at Dave and Amy's. I sent an email this morning to remind the men. So 6:30, Dave and Amy's. Also, I wanted to mention we have these. You know, the communion cups. These are coming back. They were out of stock because we started using these, which are much easier to open, if you notice, and they'll be back for next Sunday, so we won't have to bother with the other ones. Uh, anything else? Choir is going to sing the benediction, is that correct? 
Good.